Hello, welcome to Sean's Wild World. My name is Sean, and let's dive straight into this one because it's going to be really cool. I actually spent, had a whole lot of fun doing the research for this one. Um, today, we'll be talking about the amazing and misunderstood, of course, by the title of the series, um, importance of vultures and condors. Now, vultures have always gotten this rep as being seen as dirty and ugly scavengers. Scaven scavengers, really. Scavengers congregating around dead or dying animals. But the reality of that, but the reality, re the reality, really, Sean, the reality is that ecosystems rely on them, which have many important roles. They're, while their choice of food may turn our stomachs upside down and make us legitimately want to throw up, like some of these facts, gotta have a little bit of a strong stomach for. They help reduce the spread of disease and they clean up all of the environment. So, let's get into the misunderstood vulture. Well, first off, let's go into a few random facts about them. A group of vultures is called a wake committee venue kettle or volt. Now, mind you, these names have different uses depending on what the birds are doing. Kettle refers to a group of vultures, well, vultures that are flying. A committee, volt, and venue are used for vultures that are resting in trees and a wake is reserved for a, view for a group of vultures that are eating. So like when you see them all congregated over like one meal, you call it a wake. If you see a whole bunch of them flying around, it's called a kettle. But if they're all sitting in a tree and sort of resting or sunbathing, it'll be called a committee, volt, or venue. How amazing. Now, vultures are split into two different groups as are a few other species of animals. Well, a few other groups of animals. Um, you have old world vultures and new world vultures. There are, I believe, 19 different species of old world vultures. and new world vultures, there are six. Of the six that are new world vultures, two of them are condors. Now, condors and vultures, there's no legitimate difference. The only difference was the name. Um, I'm sorry. I feel like I need to, to get something to drink. <clears throat> but... Condors and vultures, there's no legitimate difference. Well, the only real difference possibly would be in size, as condors are much bigger than average vultures. So, extra information. And New World vultures are a little gross. I mean, there's no other way around that. Um, New World vultures are vultures that live in the northern, North and South America, well, that live in the Americas. Old World vultures live in the Eurasian, live in Europe, Asia, Africa, there are actually no species of vultures that live in Australia, well, that are native to Australia. So, interesting. Um, new old vultures are really an acquired taste. New old vultures often vomit when threatened or approached. Contrary to some accounts, they do not projectile vomit on their attacker as deliberate defense. But it does lighten their stomach load to make it make takeoff easier. The vomited meal residue may distract a predator, allowing the bird to escape. Now, this is similar to how many people know pigeons. If you were to scare a pigeon, it would poop and fly off. Now, that's not as we'd like to think. We're scaring the crap out of them. It's the bird is lightening its load. That way, it can get away faster. It's just pooping because that's the easiest way to lighten its body. So, interesting. Um, let's see. New old vultures also, this is, this is where it gets gross, urinate straight down their legs. The uric acid, acid kills all bacteria accumulated from walking through carcasses and also acts as evaporative cooling. Now, anyone who gets like my Snapchat daily animal facts remembers, might remember when I did the fact about how kangaroos will lick their arms to cool off. This is the same idea. They pee down their legs, because that's the only real part of bare skin that they have, with the exception of most of most vulture species, their necks. Um, they pee down their legs, and their stomach acids are so strong that it actually kills off... Let's see if I can find that. that fact. Thank you. I wish I could remember exactly the, the things, because I don't want to say I don't want to say if I don't exactly know it but their stomach acids are so strong that it completely kills um, botulism 
cholera, and basically any other sickness that can be inside of a carcass. So their stomach acid is pretty strong, so they use it in a way sort of like sanitizer. Peeing down their legs, it sort of clean, cleans their legs of any sort of organisms that might be sitting on there from when they're walking through their meals. And as the liquid evaporates, like because that's how evaporation works, their leg actually gets a way to cool down. So it does double duty. It's extremely gross. I would definitely not condone attempting that. Not, no, let's leave it for, that's, that's strictly for the birds. Now off of that topic, let's talk about what they eat. Now it's of course true that they eat like carrion. Carrion is rotten flesh or anything dead. And they're the Vultures are the primary consumers of this enormous resource, outcompeting all other carrion feeders simply by finding and consuming carcasses more rapidly than any other scavenger. So they are the world's cleanup crew. And the different foods that they eat is really interesting. There is one species, the bearded vulture, that is the, oh, sorry, the bearded vulture is the only known animal whose diet is almost exclusively bone. 70 to 90% of their diet is just bone. And they aren't like eating the bone whole and like swallowing it. No, what they do is they'll pick up a piece of bone like from a, sca or a, a pre scavenged carcass. They'll fly really high up over a rock, like over a specific rock and they drop it. Bone falls, falls. And normally they can do this from 100 to 200 to even, in some cases it's been reported they've dropped it from a mile up. The bone falls and it shatters, so the vulture goes down and it actually eats the marrow from on the inside of the bone. So, yeah. And bearded vultures are also one of the few animals that we know of that use makeup to attract the other sex. Interesting. If you look up bearded vultures, you'll see potentially two different types of images, and you almost think that they're two different genders. But you'll see one where it's like a nearly whitish yellow color, and then one where it's like a striking red. Well, actually, those could be the exact same bird. And what they'll do is they'll find iron-rich sands in their territory, and they'll brush their feathers all, all into it, and they'll sort of tinge their feathers red to show females, hey, my territory has iron-rich soil. I live in a very wide range of territory because iron iron rich soil isn't that isn't that easy to find where they live. So when they find it, they normally binge that all over their bodies. But speaking of binge, let me go back to foods. Um, vultures will normally gorge themselves when prey is abundant until their crops, which is the little um, the organ that many birds actually have just behind their throat that actually helps them hold food. And they'll gorge themselves until that actually starts to bulge out of their feathers. That's really interesting to me. And then they'll sit sleepy or half sleepy or half torpid to digest their food. These birds do not carry food in their claws, claws to bring to their children, but rather they um rather they just dis disgorge the food from their crop half digested, but I'm okay with that, you know. A whole lot of animals do that, and it's still gross to me. Though there is an oddball in the vulture family. The palm nut vulture, it's also called the vulture and fish eagle, is a large bird of prey and is a large bird of prey in the only, I believe the only one, no it doesn't, sorry. I almost made, a, made up a lie. And is the only member of the genus Gyophorex. Unusual birds of prey, it feeds mainly on the fruit of palm oils, though it also feeds on crabs, mollusks, locusts, fish, and has also been to occasionally attack domestic poultry and bats. So this vulture, and it's the one that's going to be the, um, what is that called? I don't know why I can't think of words right now. The thumbnail for this video. It is the most gorgeous vulture I've ever seen. And I, I like, if you ask the people who were with me on my Instagram live as I was doing the research for this, I was talking about like four or five different species I thought were just beyond beautiful. So they're really cool oddballs in the vulture family. And 
let's not forget the importance of the vulture. They eat, let's see, they consume staggering amounts of biomass from carcasses the size of mice to elephants and temperate tropi tropical environments worldwide, of course, except Australia, because they don't live there. And they are the greatest cleanup crew the world has ever known. Award for the Vulture. Lifetime Achievement Award. Now, lifespan. This is normally where many vultures sort of hit that edge where they're starting to get, well, not edge, um, it's hard to describe, I'll, I'll get to it later. Um, sexual maturity and breeding behavior do not appear in condors until five or six years of age, same as for vultures. Um, they may live for 50 years or more and mate for life, though the world's oldest condor died at 100. Now, condors also take the record for the longest confirmed lifespan. Now, even though there are reports of longest confirmed avian lifespan, even though there are, are like reports of people saying that their pair, that a pair just lived to be over 100 years old, um, condors are the only animals that we know have, that have lived 100 years and have been dated from birth to death. So they take that award. Now, wingspan and size. This is where it gets fun. Of the vulture species, the Andean condor takes the award for amongst vultures. Oh, sorry, amongst vultures and condor species, the Andean condor takes the award for the largest wingspan, ten feet and ten inches. That's insanely huge. Though it's not the largest bird in the world. The largest wingspan in the world belongs to the wandering albatross, who has a wingspan of 11 feet and 6 inches. Even bigger from, an, from a bird that's shorter than the Indian condor. I was talking to someone and they said it was like... What did they say? They said it was like Kevin Hart with Shaq's, with Shaq's arms. And I'm like, perfect. That is the best analogy for that. Um... Though, even the wandering albatross would have been afraid of the condor's ancient relative. It was believed to have lived in the western coast of North America and during the, ice, during the last ice age. Its scientific name was Argentavis magnificens from South America. And it was, sorry, I feel like I'm going to sneeze. Jesus. And it may have been the largest flying bird ever with a wingspan of 23 feet. No, mm -mm. that's called the note bird. Um, no, I love birds, but you see when that thing blacks out the sun as it attempts to fly, I would definitely poop my pants. That is, that is a definite, I will not mess with that. Now, let's not forget, I mean, this bird is very important to the, to the environment in all possible ways, but it is under threat. Nine species of vulture can be found living in India, but most are now in danger of extinction after a rapid major population collapse in recent decades. As recently as the 1980s, there were up to 80 million white rumped vultures in India, but today the population numbers only to several thousand. The removal of carrion, rotting flesh, is a necessary link on the food chain. Vultures can eat rotting flesh that contains anthrax, botulism, cholera bacteria with no ill effects because the acids in their stomachs can destroy these organisms, thereby, thereby removing them from our ecosystem. Now, because of them, their population drops in the area, that has actually increased the amount of rabid dogs because the dogs are able to eat these um, sick animals. And it also increases the possibility for humans to get sick from being around the corpses or stuff corpses and stuff and animal ability to be to get sick so vultures really play an, an extremely important role everywhere because they keep us from getting sick by doing the things we really don't want to see exist like peeing down their legs not fun condor numbers have dramatically declined Condor numbers dramatically declined in the 20th century due to poaching, lead poisoning, and habitat destruction. A conservation plan was put in place by the United States government that led to the capture of all remaining wild condors, which was completed in 1987. 
then only a total of 27 individuals. These surviving birds were bred with at the San Diego Safar Zoo Safari, Safari Park in the Los Angeles Zoo. Numbers rose through captive breeding and beginning in 1991, condors started to be reintroduced into the wild. The California condor is one of the world's rarest bird species. As of December 2015, there are only three, 435 condors living wild or in captivity. So that's a really great success story for the condor. But I mean, we have to remember, well, for the California condor, we have to remember there are so many different other reasons why they're going extinct. Like the species of India uh, are declining because it's found that it was caused by residues of a veterinary of the veterinary drug diclofenac found in animal animal carcasses. So someone could say their dog gets sick and they take it to the vet, the vet gives it diclofenac, diclofenac to help it heal. And the dog gets better and say a few months later, the dog dies. Now there's still residue of the diclofenac in the dog's body. Now, if a vulture should come by and eat and feed on the carcass of the dog, that vulture would actually end up dying because of the residue. So what India had, well, what most countries that have the, have the drug like to sell, Actually, they've banned it or they've given substitutes for it that can be eaten by the vultures without killing them because this it does cause problems socially for the people and on the topic of Andean condors which is as mentioned earlier the largest species of vulture it is adapted to because it's adapted to very low mortality and corresponding low reproductive rates I mean I believe it said it could they breed every three or four years they don't become sexually mature until six years old so that's six years you have to live until you can attempt to breed and then after you breed it's three or four years until you can breed again so that makes it really hard to keep the species up and running because uh let's see da, 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 it's very vulnerable to human prosecution, most of which stems from the fact that it's perceived as a threat by farmers due to alleged attacks on livestock. Now, this could go both ways. It could be potentially true, but not in the way it's worded. Um, Indian condors do get to be about three to four feet tall. So I could see them, I could see them potentially attacking maybe chickens or very small goats. I could not see them attacking anything larger like cattle. That would make sense. So maybe that's that's the only thing I could see them attacking or it could be it's perceived as them attacking the the livestock. Like say one of a farmer's cows die and the farmer doesn't know about it but when it goes out to the pasture to see all it sees is a condor sitting on top of the body eating. So it could be perceived as killing the animals. So it could go both ways. But as of now, it does not look too great for the vulture. There are about 16 species of vulture that are, that are listed as endangered. I believe five or six of them are listed as critically endangered. So, I mean, we have to realize how important the vulture is to our ecosystems. I mean, if you want a clean and beautiful world, you have to have someone who's, you have to have some group of animals that's gonna be able to clean it up. Unless you wanna go out and catch roadkill and go find everything that's died in the, in the wild, that doesn't seem like too fun a job. But we have to be able to realize that Every animal is extremely important to where it is and what it does. And you can't just discount an animal because you don't know what it does. Do a little research on it. You'd be surprised what you'll find. Like, I, the biggest surprise to me was the palm nut vulture. Because that didn't make sense to me. Because I was like, you think all vultures are, are like just strict, what was it, detritivores? Where they eat just dead animals? No. This guy eats fruits, fish, nuts, seeds. It... Interesting. And he's an active hunter. So I'm like, hmm. It's, you never know until you actually go and search what each animal does. So 
with that, I say thank you for watching the video. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, do all those amazing things. Tell someone about a vulture. I mean, they're pretty amazing animals. So, please follow me on Instagram, on Snapchat. I'll put that down there because, you know, I'll try something new. And have a wonderful day. I'll see you guys later.